Hi, I'm Ross from Energy Matters. Welcome to our podcast, Road to Zero, where we dive headfirst into all things renewable. Join us as we chat with industry experts, tech specialists, and some of your favorite TV and radio personalities, asking the renewable energy questions that you want answers to. Our goal, a zero carbon future. Today, I'm absolutely stoked to be, to be, to be joining uh, my now good buddy, um, Jesse Rayburn, who along with his partner Mel were contestants on the block, the Oslo in 2019, and walked away with a whopping profit of 388,000 bucks. The St Kilda locals have since purchased their first home together with their winnings and are currently renovating. Can't wait to ask a few questions about that. Uh, real estate agent Jesse was responsible for finding them the perfect abode with renovations in mind the moment they purchased their house. With Mel in charge of the budget and Jesse putting his handyman skills to work, we can't wait to see what these two create in their new home. Jesse, good morning. How are you? Good morning, Rosh. I'm doing extremely well. Stoked to be on the Energy Matters podcast. Uh, it's been a long time coming. So, yeah, really happy to be here. It has, mate. Perseverance pays off. But you are <laughs> you are, you are, are a very, very busy man. And we'll, and we'll kind of get to that in a little while because I'm pretty inspired like, by how much you take on. It's ridiculous. I mean, I think I have multiple plates spinning, but you take it to another level. Um, but, Jesse, just before we get stuck into that, mate, a little bit on the past. I mean, obviously, you know, I and a lot of other people around Australia um, know you from um, your appearance in the block. You know, and I know you've probably spoken about this millions of times in the past, but just really quickly, what had you and Mel appear in a block? What led to that? Uh, I actually were sold a house for Courtney and Hans in 2018 at the Gatwick. Yep. And I, I've always been a massive fan of the show. So whilst I was selling Courtney and Hans property, I also said to Mel, look, we should apply for the block. You know, like it's always been a dream of mine to go on the show. Um, I think if we're ever going to have an opportunity to do it now would be the right time because I actually am getting to meet some of the people who make these decisions. Um, and so Mel said I was dreaming, like, because I always am. Uh, but I was like, it's not going to stop me. And so we were on our way out for dinner one night. And I said, obviously, oh, need to pop into our apartment in St Kilda, which we were renovating. And as we went in there, I said, right, we're going to shoot a quick little video, which she wasn't happy about. We did one take. Uh, we sent that off um and completed the whole application and then yeah we ended up getting on the show in 2019 which was probably one of the best and worst seasons uh the best being we're so close with all of the other contestants that we did the show with like we speak to them every day we absolutely love them but the worst being that it was the biggest block ever um it was also 14 weeks where the others are usually only 12 yeah, wow. and yeah, we had three stories We uh, to renovate 500 square metres. There was nowhere to park, nowhere to store material. There was a clear way every day uh, on both sides of the road between 7 and 9 a.m. and then between uh, 4.30 and 6. So cars were getting towed regularly. You couldn't have bins left out overnight. So it was just like, it was probably the hardest thing I've ever done in my life, hands down. Elise and Matt, Elise actually said she'd rather have three kids again than do another 14 <laughs> weeks at the Oslo. That's how difficult it was. Oh, my um, God. I do often ask, ask former contestants, would they do it again? And, and most of them are like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I don't, I, no, you carry on. Yeah, I'll, pro I'll, probably, I'll probably wouldn't uh, want to do the Oslo again. That was... Yeah, it's been a couple of years now, so the trauma has has slowly subsided, but it took a while to uh, to recover from that fully. Probably twelve months, I think, mentally and physically. Mate, but you're still a glutton for punishment. I mean, you rock up pretty much every year and um and do the auctioneering, which is awesome. Um, what had you get into the auctioneering? I mean, what what's kicked all that off? Oh, look, I, I was actually I used to be a tiler before doing real estate, and. I always thought that you can make more money with your head than you can with your hands. And I had always had a passion for real estate. I bought my first property when I was like 18 years old wow. and it just sort of being in construction, I was meeting new clients all the time. And I thought, well, actually, I actually enjoy the, re the relationships that I'm building with these clients more so than I do the tradesman work. And so then I was like, well, what's the perfect sort of job? And, and that probably led, that led me to real estate where I get to meet different clients all day, every day, I get to go into these beautiful homes. I get to talk about um, building, construction, as well as renovating, and also just, you know, making new friends. And that's literally how it started. I was in Mackay, 
And then, yeah, so I just took a gamble. I didn't have a job here, never been to Melbourne before, moved my whole life down here and then got into real estate. And then within six months, I called my first auction. I was yeah, <laughs> I was wow. pretty fortunate. Yeah, my boss at the time, a bloke called Marty, was just as young and enthusiastic as I was. And I said, I really want to be an auctioneer. Like, it's just so fun. You put yourself out there. I call it street theatre because uh, that's yeah. to me what it is. I think, you know, the little childhood dream would be a stand-up comedian, but I'm not that funny. So <laughs> auctioneering is the, the next best thing where you get to be on the street and perform. And from there, it just sort of it took off. Like, I'm really confident in auctioneering. I don't, you know, do the really fast talking, like the give it a give it a sort of stuff. I just more like to tell a story and, and engage with people. And so far, it's going pretty well. People seem to enjoy it. And, yeah, I've done two auctions on the block. Uh, do an auction most weekends for my own properties and some of my colleagues' properties and, yeah, yeah charity auctions. I really enjoy the auctioneering. Auctioneering is a lot of fun. No, that's and, – and right now, are you working um, – do you have, um, you know, a series of different agencies that you represent? Is it just your own? How does it work? Yeah, so I'm employed by a company called The Agency. They're a national brand. They're all around Australia. I think they just opened in Brisbane as well as uh, the ACT in Canberra. Yeah. Um, they're publicly listed. They've got some of the best agents in the country and they, yeah, they, they support a flexible work-life balance, which is ideal for me because of the other things I do being TV and renovating. Um, and yeah, they just got a, a huge network of agents all around the country and it's just a real pleasure to, to work with them, to be honest. You do seem to be really happy. I mean, any time I've ever seen you out socially playing golf or not, you've always got a smile on your face. And I've never actually, I've never actually heard you say a bad word. In fact, you never have actually said a bad word about anyone or anything. A few jokes and a bit of banter, of course. But you, you seem to be really, really happy inside of what you're doing, especially you know with that part of your role. I mean, with, with the agency, I mean, what and you know, what three things would you say differentiates those guys from other real estate, you know, real estate organisations? I mean, there are quite a few. Yeah, well, my agency is very different in that they don't have uh, all the offices are owned by the agency. They're not franchises. Yeah. And so instead of having a director in every single agency creating a different culture, we just have a board of directors for the entire company. And so there's no franchises. It just whatever happens at the top is the same in every office, which makes it like very enjoyable. It makes it easy. There's no confusion. Um, they allow the flexible work-life balance. They understand that a lot of people do want to be in real estate because they have other things that they do. They want to be able to take their kids to school, pick them up from school. They might want to, like myself, be able to play golf on a Thursday or Friday, uh, which I find very helpful. And the only KPI that they're really interested in is how much you're writing, like your commission. So, yeah. you know, if you're keeping your head above water, if you're doing well and you're not in the office for four days, well, that's completely fine with them because at the end of all they're looking at the end of the month is the statement. And if you're making them money, then they're happy. So that really suits um, my lifestyle. It suits every agent I know who works there. It suits them because they're all sort of senior established agents who don't need to be micromanaged and they're you know pretty competent and capable to stand on their own two feet. No, that's fantastic. I mean, it sounds like an amazing place. I know there's a number of people that we know, um, you know, who've got like, you know, who the next generation want to get into real estate and uh, so it certainly is um, a good tip for those guys to give you a call or to give, you know, find their local uh, local office and maybe have, have a chat. Um, just moving, digressing slightly now to um, to some of the sort of TV stuff that we've been, you know, we've personally been working together on, which I love, and, um, and renovate a rebuild, you know, went to air at the end of last year. I mean, that was awesome. Um, I mean, what were your experiences about renovate and rebuild and, and what did you do, enjoy about the show? Well, renovate or rebuild was hands down the funnest TV show I've worked on. Like it was funner than the block because um, it, it was all about helping people make what is arguably the most difficult decision that most families face right now is whether they should knock down the house and rebuild or whether they should keep the existing home and renovate, particularly with the cost of construction now being so high. Yeah. Um, like there are some you know so homes are sentimental to people but renovating is actually quite expensive now and it's almost on par with rebuilding so it's even i think more difficult now because usually you go to a rebuild and you know you're going to be paying twice as much 
but now the renovation's so expensive people who love these family homes who've lived in them for 20 and 30 years are going oh, i don't want to you know pull it down so and, and it's like a starting block everybody needs to start somewhere and, and that starts with the planning are you going to renovate yeah. or rebuild so to be able to go into people's homes and provide very sound advice talking from experience offer all the pros and cons between two of them and then give them a set of plans to match uh, their lifestyle and what they've asked for is really satisfying to be honest i really enjoyed it i mean that you're absolutely awesome on it and you know one, one thing that really sort of you know captivated us on the days we we're filming together was your genuine passion for sustainability and renewable energy technology and you know i mean one of the outcomes i got from the show i mean obviously i know my industry you know reasonably well um probably better than most and at the same token I had no idea how many ways there were to improve, you know, a person's energy rating. And, um, you know, and you, you seem to love it. I mean, literally, you're like a, you're like a sponge when it comes to technology conversations because we chat, you know, we'd, we'd go to a, you know, to a home together. You'd be talking to one of the partners, but I think we spoke to FEMA. We, we had a whole bunch that we worked together with. And um, within seconds, you were just banging out the questions. And they're so intelligent. I mean, is that a passion you have something, something you have a passion for? Look, it is. I, I, I always have a passion for consuming knowledge, um, but particularly with the renewable energy space, like just, just learning along that process that not only by making your home more sustainable, uh, is it obviously going to help, you know, the environment and everything that goes with that, but it also makes it such a more comfortable home to live in. And I didn't know that until we sort of started and they start explaining the reasons why by, you know, um, beefing up your insulation it's obviously going to stop the fluctuation of temperature whether it be hot or cold all year round um, by beefing up the insulation the double glazing you're going to reduce your um, need for heating and cooling which is also going to make it uh, you know more comfortable all year round and yeah. now especially as well like they were talking about the cost of energy and you know we're looking at um, you know with FEMA for instance the cost to um, put a FEMA um, battery storage system in place and what that is, and then comparing it to the cost of, you know, running a conventional um, gas heating and cool um, gas heating, and then you're running, um, obviously, a split system air conditioning. And, you know, within like five years, the system is paying for itself, which is incredible. And also in those five years, you're actually, you know, reducing your carbon footprint as well. So my passion for that is like, you know, we're about to have a family as well. And I just want to, you know, leave the world probably greener and cleaner uh you know for them as as we get older as well no that, and, that, and that's exactly em's philosophy I and mean, we'll get back to that in a second because um i know I, I i have a habit of digressing the conversation <laughs> and, I know, and i know you'll run with run with me on it um you know what what i want to quickly now do is we're working on another we've just completed filming on another show and it's in fact already on air uh we've got season episode three coming to air this saturday it's um Open Homes Australia. Before I ask you some questions about it, I'm just going to quickly play preview for episode three. On this episode of Open Homes, a home designed perfectly for family living. We go on a tour with AFL legend Todd Goldstein. To fit five kids into to one house is hard work, so the best way to do it was to, to build our own one. Beck checks out some chic Coco Camellia interiors. That master bedroom was very typical of what I would expect from you. Modern glamour in Sydney. Take a tour through the winning house of the Block 2021. It does have a nice feel overall, it's just very eclectic. And a modern classic in Brisbane. Right, well, we've had three of your homes on our show before, all of them amazing, and this one looks like it's not going to be the exception. Come with us as we step inside. Mate, how awesome was that interview with Goldie? <laughs> <laughs> oh mate, Todd Goldstein is an absolute legend. Like yes, I've seen him play football my whole life. You know, he holds records in the game that most people don't even know about. And yeah, like I think he's got four kids. He's just an all-around really genuine bloke. I know as well he's getting on his in, in his career in terms of how old footballers are. But he's yep. so optimistic. He, he'd be like me. He's like, no, I'm going to keep playing. He's been signed the game. He's going to have a standout season. So, yeah, really appreciate the time that Todd took to have a chat with us. It was a good day. That was a fantastic day. And once again, you just absolutely surprised me how much you knew about AFL, especially, you know, specifically Goldie. You're talking about how many, you know, 
I don't know what that thing's called that what the ruckman does. When yeah, hit outs in the ruck. <laughs> yeah, that. And uh, you're just banging out the statistics. It's like, yeah, that's exactly what I've done. Uh, mate, he had a it, thousand it hit outs. Well. Yeah, he had a thousand hit outs in a, um, in a season, which is incredible for anybody who follows football. I think it's an all time record. So obviously it's saying something. It's never been done before. So yeah, I was pretty enthusiastic. No, you were. And look, that particular episode is awesome because it features, I mean, North Melbourne um, are sponsored by Hello Solar. And Hello Solar, obviously, you know, are the ones that really, you know, wanted, were keen for us to explore the home, as well as get to have a look at the actual North Melbourne training ground, where they've got a huge solar system, a massive solar system on their roof. So um, for anyone, you know, who, you know, for anyone listening and watching before that obviously the episode goes to air, definitely make sure you um, watch episode three. And if you miss it, you'll be able to still jump off to the Nine Now um, Catch Up TV and, uh, and stream that particular episode. It's an absolute barnstorm. And the interview between Jesse and Goldie, I mean, it's enthralling. It really is. It's a completely different type of episode to every or segment of an episode that we've seen so far. So, uh, mate, I love it. I love it. What Jesse, just real quick before we move on to um, – um, some other stuff. I mean, what, what do you love most about being in media? I mean, you are obviously, you know, you're still down to earth, grounded, tradie, renovating your own home and doing tiling. And then alongside that, helping people find their own homes for real estate, for auctioneering. But then inside of the media side, I mean, you've really just, you know, run away with it. I mean, like you put your hands up every single time there's an opportunity to do something that's going to, you know, really add value to the organization that's requesting your help. And you're just committed and passionate to help. And with the media component itself, I mean, what is it about that that you love? Well, that's where I ultimately get to be like exactly who I am. I get to, because I am very enthusiastic. Often in real estate, I, I tone it down a little bit because you're having those client meetings. But with the media stuff that I do, you can just 100% be exactly who you are. And you don't have to shy away from being excitable or enthusiastic. And I just have so much fun with it. And I love going to people's homes and meeting them. And I know that it can be a very nerve wracking experience for people to be on TV. So my job is to obviously make them feel as comfortable as possible and to get the best out of them. Because what we're ultimately trying to do is have a conversation with people as if the cameras aren't there, which is probably the hardest thing to try to create for people yeah. who've never done TV before. And so I really enjoy going into their homes and making them feel as comfortable as possible, building an instant relationship and rapport with these people. And then we make some incredible TV and I get to look at these beautiful homes. And I just, yeah, I, I do really enjoy the media side of, of my career. No, good man. And you're very good at it, mate. So um, I can certainly see that, that you'll, uh, you'll be growing, growing inside of that and inside that particular avenue. And I can't wait to see some of the work that you produce in the years to come. What would you say for yourself right now, when you're looking back at your current, your actual career right now and what you're doing, I mean, what are the major challenges that you're, you're, you specifically are facing? I mean, do you have any challenges or? Yeah, I, my challenge at the moment is time. I, yeah. I don't have enough time, particularly with daylight savings about to end and it's so dark. Um, you know, I'm renovating a house at the moment, so the end of last year when we started in summer, I was able to get to site every day at like 5.30 and just clean up the site before any tradesman gets there. Now you can't get there until, you know, seven o'clock because it's dark. And then I'm also, you know, renovating. Um, I'm filming Open Homes Australia still. I'm selling houses as well as calling auctions on the weekend, um, as well as, you know, doing that. Everything you see on our social media account, I actually produce all the content and yep. so to anyone who, who has run a social media account will understand like that in itself is almost a full-time job. Um, Absolutely. Because we've got, yeah, we've got a lot of sponsors helping us as well with our renovation, which is fantastic. Uh, so it means that we have to do a lot of stuff for them. And yep. obviously I've got a baby due in six weeks time. Which is so, so exciting. We're, <laughs> <laughs> we're preparing everything for that. So the biggest challenge I face is just not having enough time in the day. I, I would be happy if there was like a 30 hour day, to be honest. No, fair play. How, how is Mel, by the way? I mean, she's, she's you know, the, the power behind the man. I mean, she's an absolute awesome individual. We love Mel. Um, how's she going? How's the pregnancy going? Mel is doing really well with the pregnancy. She's been, I don't know if she wasn't doing well, if she would tell me, because she's such a trooper. But 
yeah, like she's been amazing. She's still exercising, walking daily. She's still doing everything that she was doing before she was pregnant. I think she only stopped playing golf maybe, I think two weeks ago we stopped playing golf because Mel and I played together. So she was playing up until she was, you know, eight months pregnant. And yeah, she's just enjoying it. She's working as well, still full time. And she's helping at the house. Like most afternoons, she'll come to the house and give me a hand to clean up. We'll sweep everything. We'll vacuum it just every day. Give it a little bit of a tidy up before the trades arrive. And yeah, yeah, she's an absolute trooper. Like she's going to be the best mom. She's so organized, which is fantastic because I'm not very organized. So (laughs) together we're just like the perfect team. Oh, mate, well, I can tell you now, our little girl, Coco, she's cut, she can't wait for yours to pop out. <laughs> she's very excited and she's, I think she's really picked out the bear that she's, you know, the little uh, toddler bear, the, the, you know, that's, that's uh, you know, health, but that, well, it's not dangerous essentially, but she's, uh, she wants to deliver that to your baby hands on. So we can't wait, can't wait for that yeah. moment to happen, mate. Yeah, so, well, look- and Coco, Coco can sing us another song, that'd be great. Oh, mate, she's best at karaoke, isn't she? The best at karaoke. <laughs> uh, if you're watching this, go, go. Yeah, we'll get you on a podcast and you can sing a song for us. So uh, quick question, getting onto the technology side and more so over zero carbon future. I mean, firstly, regarding renewable energy technology, I know you've been a massive and a staunch pet, you know, sort of um, advocate for it. And, um, you know, but inside of, you know, and I know you've highlighted in this conversation that solar power and battery technology Definitely, yeah. You know, additions to every home that people should have them, right? And uh, you can certainly offset them off your power bills and make them affordable. But what are your thoughts on electric vehicles? Do you reckon now is the time? If I could afford an EV right now, I would buy one. And the price of petrol at the moment, the way it's increasing as well, I would one hundred percent be buying. My next car will be an electric vehicle. There's like zero emissions. You plug into charge. We know that that technology is improving as well. So the, the yes. charging time is going to continue to become less and less. Um, at the moment though, Rosh, I'm lucky to drive 100 kilometers a week. So yeah. <laughs> I could have a full charge and that would probably last me like you know a month. I wouldn't even have to worry about plugging in. Um, what's really interesting though, is I actually live in Windsor and we don't have a car park. And a lot of places I sell real estate don't have car parks. And I'm seeing more and more people actually um, running charging cables from their the inside of the house out to the street and just putting a little um you know um you know footwear footpath thing over it to protect the cable yeah i'm thinking that is amazing because i always thought that would be a drawback for some people because not everyone has a, a garage and so now i'm actually noticing them more and more pop up around the city where people who don't even have a car park are still able to have an electric vehicle which is really cool that's amazing i mean for us I mean, I, I can't wait to buy an EV and I'm just, you know, we, we live in an apartment. We're very high up in that apartment and it's there's no um, visitor bays in the, in, the, in, the, sort of, in the basement where we park and there's no electrical supply specifically. So, you know, we've asked the question, but because we rent, you know, it's, it's a strong no from body corporate to even explore it. And, um, and I'd love to throw a, a charging cable on my balcony and pull it down. So we we, we can't wait till we till we move at the end of the year and start to renovate our own property. You know, it's for, for me, it's just all the things we talk about and I love. I can just get all that tech happening. So it's going to be incredible. But with Energy Matters, as you know, Jesse, I mean, we believe in a zero carbon future. And you did mention it earlier on in the conversation about, you know, the, the great thing about going renewable is, you know, carbon reduction, renovate and rebuild was a staunch advocate for that as a TV show, you know, really promoting sustainability, you know, high energy ratings and um, and just really how to reduce emissions. I mean, what, what are your thoughts on climate change? I mean, do you, you know, there's a lot of talk about it. Do you believe that we're in a, we're seeing changes now to our climate as, as a, you know, as a result of increased carbon? Yeah, I'm not a scientist, so I won't talk too scientific, but I think that, well, in my lifetime, I was born in the Gold Coast and, and grew up, spent a lot of time in Lismore. And, you know, they always talk about, I think it's the 1970 floor flood that went through there that broke every record. And then just again, we've seen uh, another, that record be broken again. And sadly, so many people have actually, you know, lost their homes, which is terrible up there. So yes. I can already see changes happening in my lifetime. Um, and I just think, yeah, I just think, you know, whether you like some people believe in it, some people don't, I just think there's no harm in wanting to have cleaner air that we breathe and cleaner oceans and less pollution and less waste. I think everybody could probably agree with that statement. No one would argue with it. 
So that's like what I'm sort of really passionate about is trying to leave that for my children. You know, I want them to be able to swim in the ocean without getting plastic, you know. Um, yeah, so I'd love completely. it if everything we re- recycled more, you know, and, and in doing so, like all those things will naturally reduce our carbon emission, you know, and we'll just be a, a cleaner place to live on Earth. We only have one Earth, so, um, yeah, let's keep it cleaner. No, good man. I mean, what what would you say? What what little things in, in your in your if you're looking at yourself and next steps? I mean, what would you say is next for you to improve, your, increase your reduce your carbon footprint and promote sustainability? Well, I'm fortunate that we're building a new home, so we are on the new home. We've put in um, a top of the range solar system. Every awesome. bit of roof we had, we we put solar panels on. Um, you know, we went with um, an end phase inverter system. So it yeah. comes straight off the, the electricity that the solar panel reduced is transferred to DC straight from the panel into the inverter on it and then straight into our house. So we're not losing any energy there as well, which is incredible. Uh, we're doing, you know, fully double glazing, commercial grade windows, um, insulation all throughout the home, new insulation, R5 rating plus. We're going to put these foil bats, we'll take it to about R7 um it's an older home we didn't have to put insulation under the floor but we did that as well in the existing part of the home and all of those things are just going to mean that we're going to use hardly any energy that's coming from the grid that's absolutely incredible i mean a you're going to see the financial benefit in terms of having you know a very very small electricity bill if any but your carbon i mean literally you will be net zero you know which is absolutely amazing yeah, that's right. Like I'm looking into now um, just seeing if I can actually find somewhere to have a, a battery because their home is so small. We don't have any garage or external walls where can, we can actually put one. So I'm looking in to see if um, I might be able to allowed to put one in the ceiling or something like in the roof or, you know, somewhere else that's a bit un- less conventional. Um, so Senec, Senec do a stand-up battery. And, oh, really? um, Yep, there's a stand-up battery. Um, Andy and Deb actually uh, went to visit uh, one of our partners' offices in Sydney, um, Spartan G Answers, and uh, we introduced that in Renovate and Rebuild. So I'll, I'll shoot you through the information on that one. And anyone watching this or listening to this right now, you can check out Senec on Energy Matters' website. Uh, but they, they, it, it literally is that good because it doesn't require any mounting. It just stands upright and it's expandable as well. So it uh, looks a bit like a Dalek, but it's uh, a nice-looking Dalek. That's cool. Well, that's good. There, there you go. Mate, before we finish up, I mean, what's next for you? I mean, what's, what have you got coming up? Feel free to be shamelessly advertorial. If there's anything that you want to talk up or talk about and mention any names, feel free to. <laughs> yeah. No, look, I've, I've got a lot to look forward to. Like, we'll hopefully be finishing our renovation soon. So, yeah, if you want to jump on our Instagram page, Jesse and Mel Block, and you can follow our whole journey there. We put up heaps of content daily. Australians have a love of real estate and renovating, both of which I do on a daily basis. So probably a pretty good uh, Instagram page to follow, awesome. as well as, you know, male having a baby in six weeks time. So just cannot be more excited about that. Um, hopefully have a little bit of time off work. But yeah, really looking forward to being a first time dad and Mel being first time mum. Mate, well, you're going to be a fantastic father. Mel's definitely going to be an awesome mum. And look, you guys are, you know, one, you know, one of our favorite couples. I mean, you know, professionally, but also, you know, socially, when we catch up with you both, I mean, you're, you know, you're awesome people to be around. And I can't wait to start playing golf. Uh, you know, I bought this new golf trolley. I've yet to, yet to test it out, right? So, you know, we're going to get, we're going to have to get a game. No, we need to get a game before the babies here. Absolutely. I'm, I'm keen as mustard. So thanks heaps for having me, Rosh, as well. And, and Energy Matters, it was awesome to work with you on Renovate or Rebuild. Fantastic to work with you again on Open Homes. Um, and it's awesome to be educating Australia about how we can, um, yeah, just leave a brighter future for our kids. No, good man. Thanks ever so much, Jesse. We'll, I'll see you very, very soon. Cheers, Rosh. Speak soon. All right, guys. So that, that's awesome. So great. I mean, I hope you enjoyed the show this week as, uh, as much as I have and I'm doing it. Uh, before I do finish, though, remember you can get up to three free solar quotes and a free energy bill comparison via our website, energymatters.com.au. Please make sure you like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and give us a follow on our Facebook, Insta, Twitter, and LinkedIn pages. For now, we hope you have a fantastic uh, rest of the week and enjoy this week's episode of Open Homes Australia on Channel 9 Life at 4.30 p.m. on Saturday. You'll love it.